Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Ecostructure Machine Expert HBAC. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video what we're going to see are the status variables that we have on the software. So let's go to the presentation. So, as soon as we create the project and we are in the configuration tab in the top left corner, you can see that we have, depending on the controller, we have this information. Okay. We saw in the previous video the BIOS parameter. Now we are going to talk about the status variables that we are over here. This one and this one. You can see the access is the same for the N171 and the N172. Now, this is when we click on the status variables, you can see this view. And there is just a small difference between the N172 and the N171. As the N171 has the possibility to have an embedded display, the seven segment display, you have the possibility to assign a graphical way to access to this information because this status variables allows us to create variables that can be um, that can be accessed uh, remotely via Modbus or in this particular case in the N171 using the embedded display. It can also be used for the M172 uh, to share the variables on the embedded display it has. So basically that is the main difference over here. We just go to create a variable and assign this. So let me just show you. So if we go to this one, configuration, modulus object, status variable. Here I can define CF um, indication or uh, uh, indication uh, temp here you can define something by default it's trying to add the four characters that you have if not you can specify something else LTA okay so you have different things over here you have possibility to add variables and also to remove them okay and once you have the variable installed or add it in the system, blah, 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 blah. You have the possibility to change the address. And this address is the one that allows you to use our modulus object. In case you have another PLC and try to read data to this one, you can use the modulus function in order to read the data. And if I know wrong, the N172 doesn't allow the, uh, the function 23, I believe it's the 17 in EXA. Uh, that is the one for read and write at the same time. You just need to use it separately. Um, if I know wrong, check the manual. So along with the definition of the address and the name, you have the display and also the type of value that you can use. So one is for how the system sees the, the variable type and the other one, how the programmer in a different way or the visualization of the variable for us. I'm going to show you later, for example, by creating an enum. Let's just create an enum. For example, rename uh, enum motor. You have value um, value zero on value one motor off and motor on. I'm going to show you what is this later. But here you can see the new motor. Okay, it's just a different way to access. This is the installer select like the for the programmer view. Uh, and this one the IEC is how the real variable is. Then you have min and max that can also be linked for for the scaling. Okay, not for the scaling but to define that you have different ways to show the data. This one installer access level is new. Um, that I'm going to show you in another video because it requires a different explanation about the, this supervisor and admin that it was launched in the version 1.5 of the software. So if we go to, to on the N172 here you can see the status is the same but I don't have the display part because this one doesn't have a seven segment display. 
Now, if we continue with the presentation, okay. I already showed you this add and remove. The recalc I didn't show you, which is actually a quite nice tool. So, where is the software? It's here. So, we can have different variables, for example, um, I bar 01, bar 1. Okay, I can specify like this, copy and paste, can define different addresses. I'm going to show you later the address limit, but here you can see the variables are not continuous one to the other. And if you're trying to read a bunch of variables together using all these plays, much better if you put it all together one after the other. So what you can do is to select them and then recalc. Yes, it will tell you, okay, do you want to address all the variables after this one? And it says yes, and then make everything much better now. It's one after the other. And it also takes into account if you are using, for example, real variables, okay, that has two words, recalc. There we go. So uh, this is one thing. The other one is the add multiple. So in case of doing this, you had the possibility to create variables. Um, temp. The full value, you have the possibility to make this. So you can see here how it works. I want to add, for example, uh, from starting from the 9,000 uh, step from 1 to 5 step to 10 and step by 2 and you can tell and here it tells you how many you have there we go I need add it all together it's a way to do it but I never use it I know it's a good tool but I never use it maybe I should but okay let's continue with this this is easy simple no major reason now one important here thing is the the limitation of the variables that we have okay then i'm going to explain you later okay and here there we go so we don't have uh we have a finite numbers of addresses that we can use on each controller and we depend on the device so i will move myself a little bit so for the status variables on the M171, this one, we have for this, this is the range. And for the M172, it's a much better control, you can see the range is bigger one. So in order to check this quickly, because I always forget which is the range. So here, what you can do is to type any number. You get the message that says, hey, warning, this is the range you need to use. Okay, just to let you know that. And as you can see on the other one, it's changed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but you can see the range is different. So this is it, this part, and let's see what's next. Do, do, do. Okay, so I've been using this kind of uh, document or way to make the syntax that I came from the machine export of Soul Machine. And I try to follow this. So depending on the variable that we are going to use, I usually add this prefix into the name of the variable. So for example, if I'm working with an alarm, and I'm going to make it um, Boolean, just to have a notification or something, I'm going to add the variable and X alarm 01, for example, Boolean and Boolean. So in this way, I know that um, this alarm variable is uh, is a Boolean variable when I reading or using this in the code. Now, uh, let's change this part to integer side and it. Going to put this recalc, and there we go. So now. Once we have already defined the variables, the name and everything, um, oh, I forgot to mention this. So in the new, we have this part already show you, 
or at least I believe I explained it a little bit. Uh, in the new version of the version B1.5, we have this access, but I'm going to create a different video about how it works. It's very easy. There's no big change on this part, but it's useful things to have. You have the possibility to define this part, I already told you, the insider type and the AEC. And then we have the possibility to use read only. So basically, here, if we, for example, we, here we have some parameters that can affect the configuration of our machine. So what we can do is to define some of the values to be read only. So you can use the mod bus to get access to it, but you cannot modify it. So, which is something good. Um, I'm going to put this through. And I'm not going to compile because I need to show you something. So, uh, this is for the min and max value. I'm not 100% sure if it's linked on this. I believe I first I need to compile. Uh, okay, so here you can put different values to have the max and min, which is good, it's handy. So you can have the values on the EEPROM that I'm going to show you later that have the configuration and put it in there. And you have additional information to change the variables. This is one way to do it. Um, let's go back to the presentation. Then you have different way to make the format. This if final row is going to be help us it's going to help us when we use the web server of the HM, of the embedded M172 when we want to create our web pages. It's going to be useful, but I'm going to show you later. So, one thing that we need to know what, what we one thing that we need to do once we create the variables is to compile the project. So we can use those variables in our programming. So I'm not going to compile yet, so I can show you. So I have created these variables over here, seven variables. If we go to programming, you can see now that I don't have anything at all. So what I can do here is to compile all or compile. So I'm going to make a compile all. Okay, so let me just delete this part. Uh, delete. Compile. It's compiling everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just wait a little bit for this to finish. So as soon as you compile, you should be able to use these variables on the programming part and just drag and drop where in whatever you want in your code. So programming. Here you have this new folder, configuration variables, status variables, and you can see all the variables here. And if you want, you can add it over here. There we go. To make it work. Simple. Now, just wait for me. So we can add the variable over here and we can start using it. So we have different fun different ways of different functions as I mentioned before. Um, test time. I'm going to function block. We can add the variable here and we can define if it's output or if it's input. And then we can make our own code. If you're using, for example, a ladder, um, so I created test two. I have created the one for the uh, boolean variable just can drag and drop it over here and the variable is added so it's simple once you know how to do it it's simple but uh, this is just the idea so i have already spent this part we have the configuration variable the status variables as new after we compile this this is how you can drag and drop into your code. This is something good. Just drag and drop and the variables are in there. Uh, to do what happened in the power cycle. Okay, so this is something that we need to pay attention now because if we 
I'm going to connect to the controller now. So let's see. I'm going to delete this part. Delete program. So I'm going to use part three. It's going to be part two plus I4. Okay, so compile. I'm going to connect to the controller. Okay, I'm going to do this controller. I'm going to download everything just to show you that I'm going to lose information because these are a status variable just for the status. If you want to retain information, you just need to create a EEPROM, but we are going to cover that later. Okay, yes. Just unloading everything. Uh, for most of the things so yes so I'm going to reboot this controller now this is just to show you one of the things that you may have when you download um, to a controller so let's try to pin the device okay it's back again Yes. Okay. So we can be online with equipment. Here we can modify this. Number five. Number seven. As you can see, it's doing something. Four. Now, I can also show you. Uh, let's see if I open mod scan. Just bear with me. So I can try to read these variables. Holding register eight nine six one. I believe just need to add one two uh, two variables. We need to add one or subtract one. We are gonna see it. Connect. This is is the one seven two. Okay. I'm reading something. So if we go to programming. <laughs> You can see that I read the number seven, that is the bar two. So you can, I believe this one, I cannot change it because I select not to change. Yes. But if I start from zero, uh, four, this one, I should be able to change because this is not only read only. Then you can see how it changed the values. Okay, so if I power cycle the equipment, power cycle the equipment, okay, turn it on again. I should have lost the communication right now. Okay, good. So let's wait for it to connect again. yes okay yes you can see the variables are back to zero so we have already make all these uh tests that we want for the status variables and i believe it's easy but the status variable just to show information that you want and if you want to save the information for example for configuration that we'll see in another video about the epron so we have already covered most of the things on the status. So thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one.